This is the second of two World Sociology screencasts on gender inequalities and development. In the first screencast we used the work of Amata Sen to identify different types of gender inequality and in this screencast we're going to continue with this topic by looking at explanations of gender inequalities and then we're going to look at some of the policies that have been used to address and alleviate gender inequalities. We're going to look at three types of explanations. Firstly we're going to look at what's been called the integration thesis which we can relate to the modernization theory perspective and then we're going to look at two other types of explanations that are much more closely related to the themes of dependency theory. So they are the marginalization thesis and then the exploitation thesis. Remember modernization theory is a perspective that looks at the internal barriers to development that you find in poor countries including some aspects of culture. And this type of explanation is reflected in this integration thesis which holds that traditional society is inherently patriarchal and that women will therefore gradually become more included in society as it develops and moves away from its traditional culture. So this perspective would argue that patriarchy is intrinsic to some traditional cultures. For example, this perspective would highlight practices such as female genital mutilation which is practiced by some traditional cultures as evidence for this particular view. The second type of explanation, the marginalization thesis, turns the integration thesis on its head. So this perspective argues that patriarchy is much more a product of colonialism uh, rather than a product of the traditional culture. So we can see in this quote that Leonard argues that a money economy based on wage labour and cash crops was introduced into Africa and Asia by the Europeans. This meant that men were absorbed into the cash economy whilst women were left with all of the work traditionally associated with subsistence food production. So this type of gender segregation, Leonard argues, was very much a product of the colonial era. So this type of explanation, focusing on the long-term negative impact of colonialism, is much closer in spirit to dependency theory. And the third type of explanation that we're looking at, the exploitation thesis, also I think overlaps with dependency theory. And according to this perspective, gender inequality in the developing world exists because it serves the needs of the global capitalist economy. So, for example, the argument here is that women provide a cheap and easily exploited source of informal labour for transnational corporations. For example, Daisy Francis found that over 85% of workers in free trade zones uh, working in factories and sweatshops were women. And according to this theory, in many underdeveloped countries, ruling elites are complicit in this process of exploiting women, with governments acting like pimps in offering young women to foreign capitalists. Uh, for example, consider the following advert produced by the Malaysian government. I quote, The manual dexterity of the oriental female is famous the world over. Her hands are small and she works fast with extreme care. Who therefore could be better qualified by nature and inheritance to contribute to the efficiency of a bench assembly production line than the Oriental girl. OK, we've nearly finished, but let's round off this presentation by briefly looking at some of the policies that have been used to address gender inequalities. And I think modernisation theory would really emphasise the importance of education as a development policy in this area. And you can see in this quote from the Commission for Africa that there are many people in the field of development who believe that education for girls is one of the most effective development policies. So there's evidence that it can enhance economic productivity. There's evidence that it can lower infant and maternal mortality. There's evidence that nutrition and health improve. And there's also evidence that the spread of HIV is reduced.
So this is a development policy that potentially has a really big impact. A second type of development policy that has many supporters, this time associated very closely with the people-centred approaches, is microfinance or microcredit. And microcredit initiatives, although now more widely available, have always had a core aim of targeting women, uh, allowing them access to the resources needed to improve their lives through investment and enterprise. And because of some of the inequalities that women have faced in relation to the ownership of land and property, it's usually been much harder for women uh, to get loans to start up businesses. And that's one of the main reasons that microcredit initiatives have focused so closely on the needs of women.